So this is the opposite of um, uh, putting in center and radius. So right now you are given the equation. From the equation, you are expected to be able to tell the center or radius. Even if the question don't ask for it, you must have the uh, opposite, uh, you must have the instinct idea to find center and radius. So what is the feature of this circle? So the feature will lies with the center and the radius. Okay, so uh, there are two methods. The, this is the general method you using of complete square. There's another method of memorizing the formula. So uh, usually we'll go about completing square. So how are we gonna go about completing square? Okay, the first step, you will bring the constant over after you bring the constant over, you group the x together. So there will be an x family. You also group the y together after you shift it over, after you shift the constant over. So just now we shift the constant backwards. So right now we're gonna throw back to the other side. And then you're gonna do complete square twice. You're gonna complete square for the x family and you're gonna complete square for the Y family. So every time we complete square, you're adding this. So I'm gonna do that for the X family. So this is the B for the X family. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna add, add this to the family of X. So at the same time, I'm also adding on this side. So whatever you're adding on the left side, you add on the left side. Uh, Whatever you are adding on the left, you add it on the right to balance out. So the same thing is going to happen. I'm going to complete square for the Y family. So this is the Y. So whatever you add on the left, you add on the right. Okay, so understand the adding first. And this is the part where you will be a completed square. So this is the part. So observe this part. If you simplify this part, it can be factorized. And that's how we get the completed square. Okay. So also observe the other part. Observe the family for Y. So observe this part. You will get a nine and you can factorize it easily. So use your cross factorize if you want to. And that's how we get the completed square. But obviously I never do this because it's a very obvious thing that by now you should get used to it. So this part is a minus one. That's how we get the minus one. This part is a positive three. That's why we get a positive three. So it's like a, comparing with the identity, the A plus B square identity, the A minus B square identity. And then of course this last part, just punch calculator. The calculator will give you a nine. Okay, and then you compare it with the general format. So compare it with the general format. So remember the format is, this is a subtraction. So can you see that this part, so look carefully, this is your A, this is your B. So A is equal to one, B is equal to minus three. Don't forget this is a minus. And then the radius is three. 
That's why the center is one three or one minus three. So take a look, the center is one minus three, the radius is three. So you're gonna do a complete square. So the complete square is the work backwards of expansion. So you complete square twice. Okay, so uh, the same rule for complete square, you can only complete square when the coefficient of x square is one, when the coefficient of y square is one. You cannot complete square if it doesn't apply. So there's an example here. So if you look at example 4a, so both are coefficient one. So I would like you to try 4a. But if you look at 4b, the coefficient is not a one. So I cannot complete square unless I divide by 16. Unless I divide by 16 on both sides. Then you carry on. Then you carry on. with your complete square. So if you take a look, okay, if you're thinking, then what about the y square? You got nothing to complete square. So well, you got nothing, right? That means it's essentially y minus zero. That means you got nothing to complete square. You only complete square for the x family. So after this, you will get a nice perfect square. You go and punch calculator, you will get 15 over 16. So this is your A, this is your B. So the center is one zero. This is R square. That's why if you would like the radius, you've got to take a square root. So this one will be the very, very basic that you must know for circles. So you must know how do you get center and radius with any given equation or else subsequently all the question can be quite stuck because you can't even get the basic center and radius. So give it a try for A, will you get the same center and radius?